makeup friends. Today we're just going to do a get ready with me. Barry and I are going to head out for lunch soon together, which is very nice. And I want to make myself a little bit more presentable. So I have a bunch of items in front of me that are fairly new to me. Not all of them are new items. Some of them are, some of them not so much, but they're new to me. So I'm going to do a full face, get ready with me, share my thoughts on these items with you. Let's just get straight into it. So we're going to start off with priming my face and I'm going to use a sample that I recently received when I placed a Shoppers Drug Mart order and this is from Bobbi Brown. This is the Vitamin Enriched Face Base and nope, I haven't used it at all yet so we're going into this with fresh eyes. I honestly can't tell you if this product has been on the market for some time, if it's brand new, I honestly don't know. I don't have much from Bobbi Brown to be honest, it's just not a brand that ever really hits on my radar for whatever reason. The products that I do have from them, the um, gel infused lip oil, lip gloss, or oil infused lip gel, I, some combination of those words. I really like those. I also really like their lipsticks. their crushed lipsticks, I think they're called. Uh, but I haven't really explored their face products, their eyeshadows, anything like that. So if you have recommendations from Bobbi Brown, let me know. But I can say right out of the gate, this is a little bit of a thicker consistency, so it's not quite like a face cream. It's thicker than that, and it is very heavily scented. It's not a bad scent, but it's sort of on the line of floral slash citrus. It kind of has like a grapefruity kind of smell to it. Not an off-putting smell, but very strong. So if you're sensitive to scents, I don't think you're going to enjoy this one. But it's blending out nicely. It doesn't have any sort of silicone feel. It kind of feels just like a skin cream, but thicker. So that's not to say it feels heavy. It just, I don't know. It's initial first impression. We'll see how it feels throughout the day. But right now, I'm jury's out. I'm not entirely sold on it. It's a slightly bit tacky, which is fine for a base. I don't know, not an instant love. That's okay. Anyways, let's just move on to a foundation. So I've got one here from Essence, and this is the Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation, which I have in the shade 030 Neutral Ivory. And I did order this online from Shoppers Drug Mart, and as much as I love Shoppers Drug Mart, their website is very difficult to navigate, and they don't have a great selection of like swatch pictures, and they also don't describe what the shades are. So I always have to kind of cross-reference with the actual um, like Essence website and whatnot to try to help myself out a little bit. So I know I have used this one before and I think I did a fairly good match, but Shoppers Drug Mart, please up your game a little bit. Help people out because it's really difficult when something's called neutral ivory to know what that really means. Like I, I understand that it's neutral, but everybody has different ideas of what ivory is. And then things that are just like happiness, I don't, I don't know. Am I happiness? Am I joy? Am I glee? Like, I don't know what that means. You have to explain what those shade names are. Anyways, let's move on. Oh, you can see I've got a little bit of bruising here. I don't know if it'll show up under these lights, but I can see it in the mirror. It's turned yellow now. I've got just a tiny bit of bruising here from my recent Botox. That's the first time I've ever actually bruised from it. But it's funny because I don't know what happened when he injected it there, but he knew instantly like he pressed against it and he's like, I just need to press, like put some pressure on there. So it must've like bled a little bit more. Sometimes you get like little tiny pinpricks of blood cause something's going into your skin, but it's not, it's not a painful process to be honest. And the bruise itself doesn't hurt. It's just a little bit of discoloration. Okay. That foundation blends out so nicely. And yes, I did do a good shade match. So I'm pleased about that. It's light coverage. I can still see all my freckles poking through but it's not heavy on the skin. Like I said, it blends out nicely, I'm not noticing any scent off of it. So for the like $8 or whatever it is, I'm a fan. Like Essence is bringing it with this one. I'm really pleased with that. So now we're gonna go in with concealer. Now this has been around forever, but I just discovered it in my drawer. <laughs> I've been ignoring it. So this is from YSL and it is their like Touche Claw, whatever the hell. 
I don't know, they don't have it listed on here. It's the Touche Claw something or other. And I have no idea what shade it is. I There's absolutely, I'm guessing two. There's like a two on the very bottom, but not very good branding in terms of helping a girl out. But you just, it's one of those guys that you got, oh, wow. And he's really generous. That's the problem that I don't like with the clicky things is like, you never know how much. Sometimes you have to click like 342 times for like a drop to come out. And other times you click three times and half the tube empties. So here we go. Now, I know that I have used this before, but I don't remember being like super impressed with it, especially considering the price point. I know I got this one on sale because it's got like the little stars on it. And I'm pretty sure I got it after holidays last year, but I clearly have not been in love with it or else it wouldn't have been languishing at the bottom of the concealer drawer. So I figured today would be a good day to bring it out see how we feel about the coverage, all of that, and put it to the test. So I need a brush for this. I just washed all my brushes, so there we go. Yeah, this is not up to the task for the level of dark circles that I have. And once again, I should have done just one side but it's really not doing a lot of coverage. This might be good like as an everyday kind of concealer, like if you don't want a lot of coverage, but my dark circles are fairly aggressive. They're quite assertive. They like to be seen. And this is just not going to cut it for me. I mean, it blends out nicely, so there's that, but I don't really think it does much for me. Meh. That's okay because I figured that was going to be the case, so I brought this guy out. I have talked about this one before. This is from Bare Minerals and it's their powder concealer. The uh, Eye Brightener Broad Spectrum SPF 20 Sunscreen something or other in Well Rested. It's a lot of words. It's a powder concealer. Just remember that. And if memory serves with this one, because again, it's been a while since I used it, a little goes a long way. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit, tap it out. This is the weirdest brush ever. I need to share this with you. This is from uh, Delium Tools and it's the Golden Triangle 792 Double Dome Blender. And it's like basically a two tier brush. And I don't know why I was so intrigued by it, but I really was. And then I got it and I don't like it. <laughs> the only thing it's good for is setting under my eyes but I don't really know what it's designed for specifically, but as an eye brush, it is not great. Uh, but setting under the eyes, it's good. It's a good size for that. But I don't, I don't understand the theory behind the split, like the tiered brush. I don't understand what that is meant to accomplish. I'm sure it's meant to be wildly innovative, but I've just found that it's kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. So it might be one of those things that's better in theory, but practically speaking, not so much. But there, that powder concealer definitely helps to amp up the coverage. And I don't really like the powder concealer just on its own. It is workable just on its own, but I do like having some sort of base under it. So whether I use like like an eye cream or something that's just a little bit tacky to help it sort of stick into place, but also setting a lighter coverage concealer with it works. Okay, I'm gonna do the other eye and then we'll move on to cheek products. All right, so now to add some color to my face, I'm gonna go in with this cream bronzer from Tarte. This is the Breezy Cream Bronzer in Seychelles. Again, this is not a new product and it's not even particularly new to me. It's actually in my project pan that I've been working on with um, K Bella Beauty. Uh, but it's probably the newest of the bronzers that I own, at least of the cream bronzers. I don't tend to buy a lot of cream bronzers. And I figured I may as well show it in action because I have talked about it so much in the project pan, but I don't know if I've ever shown it in application. 
But I'm just going to blend it out with this brush from Real Techniques. This is the contour brush, but I like it for the bronzer because it's just so little, but it's also dense, so it blends that cream product out nicely. I will say this bronzer, it does blend out well, but you do have to work a little bit at it. It doesn't blend as easily as, say, the um, Soleil Tan de Chanel from Chanel. Uh, that one blends out a little bit more easily, but this one's about half the price. And I have heard multiple complaints that Chanel has reworked the formula of that Tan de Chanel or whatever, their cream bronzer, let's call it, and people are not overly happy with it. I think they now have like coconut oil in it or something, and it's just, I know a lot of people have had reactions to it with their skin. I have the old formula, so I can't speak to that myself, but I do like that one a little bit better in application than this one, but this one's totally workable. As you can see, it has a nice undertone on my skin. Like it does warm my skin up without being too artificial or too orangey. And my complaints about blending it out are very, very minimal. I mean, as you saw, I applied it everywhere and now I'm going and blending and this side isn't any more stubborn than the first side that I tried. It's just that it doesn't blend as easily. So I just spend a little bit extra time, but for like the $30 price point difference, I'm okay to just swirl a brush on my face for a few extra seconds, it's totally fine. All right, with bronzer in place, let's move on to blush. And I picked up the new little mm -hmm. holiday kit here from Fenty. So I've got the cream blush and the um, gloss balm as well. And they're both in, what is this, Peach Face? Are they both called Peach Face? This one's Peach Face, this one's Peach Pout. That makes sense, but I'll show you. That's what she looks like. And I was really impressed with her holiday kit in 2020. So far, I gotta say, I'm really liking this one too. I am not sure though if this would show up on deeper skin tones. I know my friend Karen Harris purchased this as well. And I have to admit that I have been a bit of a bad friend and have not watched everybody's videos that I have wanted to. I've just been basically wallowing in my own misery for the past like month, but she might have done a review. I'm not entirely sure, but she always does tan girl friendly reviews and she's got a deeper complexion than me. So if ever you're curious about how something shows up, there's a good chance she's reviewed it because she does do a ton of reviews. But there we go, pretty little peach. And then I'm gonna use one of the brushes from Cleona Cosmetics. This is their, it uh, doesn't say on here. Well, this is what it looks like. It's like an angled powder brush of some sort but I really like it for blending out cream products because I like the angled shape and it has just the right amount of density to really blend cream products. You can use it with powder as well, but I just, I really like it for cream products. There, I just, I think this blush is so pretty. I don't know that it's my favorite shade of their cream blush. I really like the one that they came out with last year. What was that called? Fenty? Glow, Fenty Glow. This is the one they came out with last year for holiday. Oh, and I just gouged my fingernails into it. Oh, son of a gun. It looks horrific in the pan, but once you apply it to your cheeks, it actually does look very natural on the skin. But this one's really pretty as well. It's peach without being like super artificial about it. So I like this one, but now I gotta go get all this out of my fingernails. All right, I don't have a new cream highlighter. And in fact, I don't have a new highlighter that I haven't already shown on camera. But when I recently redeemed some Shoppers Drug Mart points, I picked up this blush from NARS. So going back to what I was saying about there's not great shade descriptions or swatch pictures on the Shoppers Drug Mart website, I fell victim to that with this one. So this is the shade Tempted. Again, I don't think it's new, but it's new to me. So here we are. I thought it was going to be a matte blush because it looked matte in the picture, but it's very glowy. So I'm actually gonna use this as highlighter today, but first I'm going to set my face with some Laura Mercier powder. Not new, you've seen me do it a million times, so I'm just gonna skip over that. We'll come back for highlighter. All right, face is set, so let's go in with the shade Tempted, and I'm gonna pick it up on a new brush to me. This is from Sigma, and it's the Powder Sweep F06. I really have been enjoying this for highlighter because it is so precise yet so fluffy that it still blends everything out nicely. 
So let's pick some of this up and see, see how we get on with this. I'm concerned it might be a little bit deep to use as a highlighter for me. But, it's not doing too badly. It's definitely not a highlighter, like it is a blush, so I'm just kind of playing fast and loose with that. I think this is going to be a very subtle highlight today, which is okay for a change. What is on my face? What is that? Oh, <laughs> it's a freckle. Good Lord, how have I never noticed that freckle before? Curious. It just kind of looks like I've extended the blush up a little bit, like it doesn't really look like highlighter per se, which I'm not surprised by because it's not a highlighter, so it's kind of a stupid thing to even say, but let's bring some up here. And overall, I think I just look very bronzy today, which I'm not mad at. I can handle that. Okay, and speaking of bronzing, I'm going to go in with a new setting, like finishing powder. And this one's from Guerlain. So this is their Holiday Meteorites, the Gold Pearls. Again, I cashed in Shoppers Drug Mart points, so I wanted to treat myself. Now, they're going to fly out everywhere because they always do. You see them in there? They're like a mix of bronzy and rosy kind of tones. I'll show you. I have this one's getting down to the bottom. But this is their like original Meteorites in light. You can see all the different colors in there. So that's the one that I have been using quite frequently, but we're going to try this one and we're going to hope that it doesn't make me look super bronzed because that's not what I'm hoping for. Okay, so I'm going to pick it up on this little Dior brush. I have no idea what it's called, but I really like this for using for um, finishing powder. Oh, but she's a little bit wet. I washed her last night. Ah, I should have checked that before I went in. Hmm. Okay, let's use a different brush because I'm afraid if it's wet that it's just going to pile stuff on. So I'm going to use this brush instead, which is from Shiseido. I have no idea what it's called, but that's what it looks like. So let's go pick some more of that up. I don't use a lot when I use these meteorites. So I don't find that you really need to use a lot but it does just help melt all the powders in together, especially if I'd use like a powder blush and bronzer and highlighter. I find that it really just helps to blur where all of those powders meet and just makes it look a lot more seamless on the skin. But I don't think that this is really adding a ton of color, which is good, I didn't want it to, I really didn't want it to but it just makes your skin look super healthy. Like you get like this lit from within kind of thing. It's not like glittery. It's not even particularly shimmery. There's just like this very soft luminescence to it. I love that. All right, now we're ready for the fun stuff. So I've got a palette here from Prolux and this is the Hello Autumn palette. And she's so beautiful. It's so gorgeous. Uh, this shade I'm not super wild on though. This one reminds me of the ones from Huda with like the, the Petri dish shades. It's very pretty once it's actually swatched out, but it's got like a very sort of emollient base to it. And then it's like this beautiful coppery kind of shade, but I don't understand why brands are doing this. It's a very off-putting texture. I don't like the look of it, but like I said, it is very, very pretty once it's swatched out. So I have been playing around with this palette a few times. I've worn it to work quite a few times. I am really impressed with this. It's not a brand that I've, I think I've ever heard anybody talking about, to be honest, but I saw this come up on Instagram and the color story just like screamed my name. So add it to cart. It was $13. I think it was $13.99, I think. Shipping to Canada was a little bit pricey. I can't remember off the top of my head, but $13, $14 for how many shades are in here? 18. And it performs really well. Hell yeah. So let's go ahead and put it on the eyes and I can show you what I'm talking about. Also, I did do my eyebrows off camera. I used the ABH tinted brow gel. I don't even know what it's called in deep brown. I just run it through. I don't do anything exciting with my brows, so it's not really worth talking about. Okay, 
what are we gonna do with this? Because I can pull things that are a little bit more on the pink side, or I can make it a little bit more neutral and go gold. You know what? I wanna go more pinks because I wanna use this like duochromatic shade in here because it's so pretty. So I'm gonna start off with this pink shade over here and run that through the crease and up towards the brow as a transition shade. I say I love finding like not well-known brands that are like killing it with the formula. I gotta say this is the only eyeshadow palette that I've tried from Prolux and it's really the only one that the color story really speaks to me. They do have quite a few options and a lot of like rainbow palettes as well but so do I and I really don't need any more. I just recently bought the blends palette from Blend Bunny and I am now set with my neutral or my rainbow needs rather. I don't think I can ever have too many neutral palettes though. Just such a neutral lover at heart. But you can see like that is such a light shade but it still just shows up so nicely without having to build it up. It's not super powdery. There's no patchiness. Ugh, I just, I'm really impressed with this palette and especially for the price point. All right, to deepen up the crease, I'm gonna pick up this shade over here. It is a little bit more of a neutral shade, a little bit more brown, but it looks like it has a warm enough undertone that it's gonna play really nicely with the more pinky, purpley shades that are in here. So I'm gonna pick that one up, place it essentially the exact same place where I set the pink one down, but just a little bit lower, a little bit more concentrated into the crease and then just above it. I always have to blend things up just a little bit higher than my crease in order for them to show up because if I don't, when I look straight ahead, you can't see anything. So <laughs> I just kind of have to figure out my placement. And that has taken probably far longer than it should have for me to realize that I have hooded eyes and all this kind of stuff. But until I really fell down the YouTube and Instagram rabbit hole, I didn't even know that I had asymmetrical eyes. I just never really paid that much attention to my own eyeballs, <laughs> to be honest. So it's taken me quite some time to figure out the proper placement for me and all that kind of thing. So, so I always have a hard time like when friends are like, hey, will you do my makeup? I'm like, mm, do you look exactly like me? And can I do it backwards? Because I don't know how to do this. Like I don't, I don't know how to blend. <laughs> my arms don't work that way to blend on other people. I only know how to do it backwards. Ugh. These shadows just blend so nicely. Like if this had a $30 price point, I wouldn't be upset. Like Prolux, please don't increase your prices, but like the value is there. Mm, pretty, pretty. Okay, let's deepen things up even more. I'm gonna go in with Hayride over here. I'm sure many of you have already like sort of picked up on this. I don't stray very far from the basic same structure of eyeshadows, especially like today, I'm getting ready to go out for lunch. Like I'm not, this isn't for Instagram pictures where I might spend more time and get a little bit more intricate, do like slightly different kind of placements and things like that. But this is like my everyday go-to technique. It's just a matter of changing up the colors. And I think, I think it's important to like recognize that because like makeup doesn't need to be complicated in order to be pretty. And you don't have to have like these insane skills in order to pull together pretty eye looks. Like I can't do an Instagram cut crease to save my life. Like I just can't do it. My anatomy isn't like that. I don't have the patience for it. I don't have any of that, but I can still, I think, put together some very pretty eye looks using very, very basic techniques and just let the shadows speak for themselves. So I hope you guys don't get bored seeing the same kind of shape over and over again, but it's the shape that works best for my eyes. And it's just easy to be honest, but like, holy crap, these shadows are beautiful. Then I'm gonna run that same shade under my lower lash line. And for being such a deep color, it blends out really nicely too. Like again, no patchiness, not having any issues. There's a tiny bit of fallout over here on this side which hopefully I can remove without smearing it all over the place. 
This is why I never look at myself in the mirror when I'm doing the lower lash line. Every time I do, I stab myself every time. I want to go back with, which shade? I'm gonna go back with that light pink scarves. Just pick up a little bit of that and blend out that lower lash line just to soften it up. All right, so now it's time for this duochromatic shade. And I'm just gonna pick it up with my finger, to be honest, because that's the best payout, although these do pick up really nicely with a brush as well. But hopefully my camera will be able to pick it up. It's a bit of like a gold to peach kind of shift, and it's really pretty. I'm just gonna put that on the inner portion here and over to like maybe a little bit past half. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, there we go. It's so pretty. Mm, love that. All right, inner corner time. And I'm gonna pick up this lightest champagne kind of shade here. It's called Cashmere. I'm gonna use that on the inner corner. And just run a little bit of it under my brow bone as well. And having worn these to work, I haven't experienced any issues with like fading or creasing any of that. It will show a bit of wear after like seven or eight hours but frankly so do I so <laughs> can't judge it too harshly but it's still there like it's not like it's just completely disappeared it's not all like bunched up in the crease of my eye it holds up really well I have no complaints about this okay there we have it I'm going to use my Tom Ford liner not going to do wings or anything I'm just going to line the lash line and then we'll come back and play with a mascara that's new to me but not new on the market so I'll be right back Okay, so the mascara that I'm going to use is from Urban Decay, and it's the Lash Freak. It's no Bite Beauty Upswing. And also, I don't, what in the hell is going on with this wand? Like, what, what, what is that? I don't, I don't know. I'm all for innovation, but this just seems unnecessarily complicated. I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> but anyways. Let's apply it. I have worn this a couple of times, but it's not the Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara. That has become my touchstone. Like, all mascaras now have to reach the standard that Bite Beauty has set. And this one's not necessarily bad, but it doesn't reach it. And I don't, I, like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's just so weird. I don't know. I think sometimes brands are just like, how do we stand out in a crowd? It's like, you don't necessarily need to stand out because you got the weirdest looking wand, just have the best product. There it is. But if you are okay with weird wands, I mean, this isn't a bad mascara. I do prefer their perversion mascara to this one. But it's okay, it's okay. I don't know, I can't rave about everything. I don't know, maybe I'm judging it too harshly because it's not bad. It just doesn't add the same amount of volume that the Bite Beauty does, but it does curl the lashes and it does separate them. So there's a win there, but I wouldn't buy the full size personally. Okay, I'm a little concerned that there's so much pinkish going on on here that the peach lipstick's gonna look weird, but we're committed. We're gonna go with the peach. If it's awful, I can always change it. It's not a big deal. Uh, I do have another, ooh. Which one? Hmm. Hmm. You know what? Let's put the peach one on first, and then I'm going to switch it up for the new Urban Decay shade that I picked up from Shoppers. So again, this is part of that holiday kit. Let me see. Is it the Gloss Balm or the Cream? Yeah, it's the Gloss Balm Cream in Peach Pout. I do like that Fenty releases like new shades in their holiday sets, but 
I also wish that like come the new year that they would release them in full size because some of them are fantastic like the Fenty Glow blush from last year that should be a permanent addition anyways there's the peach one on it's not too strongly peach actually and it plays really nicely with the blush as one would expect because they're both peach but for the lols I'm going to share with you this lipstick here from Urban Decay this is one of their new vice lipsticks in oat milk and I gotta wipe this off so I'll be right back I recently watched a tutorial from Angela Bright and she was wearing this at the end and I thought it looked so pretty on her that I wanted it. And it's like almost concealer lips. There's just enough color going on in there that it saves it from looking like dead lips. But I think it's so pretty. And in fact, this might actually layer nicely underneath that peach gloss. So why don't we try that? And then we'll call this thing a wrap. Oh, but it's such a pretty shade. I really like that, especially like if I had like a darker smoky eye and then this lipstick. Mm, yes. Okay, let's, I'm not usually one to layer gloss on top of lipstick, but let's just see what happens. Perfection is what happens. <laughs> oh, I like that so much. It just really punches up like the creamy aspect of this. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so there we go. I am now ready for my lunch date with Barry and I'm sure he is very ready to go <laughs> because it's like 1.30 in the afternoon. So I just wanted to share the makeup with you. I will list all these items down below and put links to what I can. But other than that, that's the video. Let me know what new products it is that you've been playing around with. What have you been loving? What have you not been loving? All that kind of good stuff. But for now, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, just be a decent human being. Bye for now.